Definitely many of us have heard in recent years that the rise of China could put the United States in serious trouble. There have even been some reputable analysts, such as Graham Allison of Harvard University, who have suggested that the rise of China and the consequent fall of the United States would lead to an inevitable war. Now, looking at China's current situation and its increasingly poor growth projections, many analysts are already beginning to set Allison's theory aside. Today, these analysts have begun to embrace another theory, that China is reaching its peak, and once it reaches that point, it will begin its decline. If so, this could be a truly worrisome one for the rest of the world. But why is that? And here is the reason, because, just as there is no animal more dangerous than one that is wounded, there is no country more dangerous than one that is in decline. When, in order to try to prevent their fall, they often resort to violence. And, do you know what China has been up to all these years? It has been increasing its defense budget, by 9% per year since the armed forces modernization announced in the 1990s was launched. In this way, China has reached a military budget of $224 billion by 2023, the second largest in the world. With all this money, China has been progressively modernizing its military capabilities and facilities. It now has 1,700 combat aircraft, including J-11s and Su-30s, comparable to the American F-16 or F-18. In fact, China now has the largest air force in Asia. But the branch of the armed forces that China has made their largest investment in is, the Navy. China's naval modernization began in the 1990s and has resulted in the Chinese Navy becoming the largest in the world, at least in numbers, with 351 ships in 2022, ahead of even the U.S. Navy, which had 294 ships that same year. Not just more, but their capabilities have also improved substantially since the 1990s. Among other features, the inclusion of ballistic missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles, along with other equipment have strengthened China. China also has a large fleet of submarines, destroyers and cruisers. On top of that, it has even managed to establish itself as the second strongest power in terms of having the most aircraft carriers, in 2012 and in 2019 it presented its first two respectively, and in 2022 it presented its third aircraft carrier, the Fujian. A ship that has capabilities such as the use of catapults and an electromagnetic design used for launching jets. Obviously, it is true that China has a larger number of military vessels. In fact, it is expected that by 2030 its navy will be even 50% larger than that of the United States. One thing to keep in mind is that, the United States has more militarily crucial vessels, such as aircraft carriers, cruisers and destroyers, which would give them a clear advantage in a war scenario. Regardless of whether China is preparing to peak and start falling or not, it's clear that China has become a formidable military, and particularly naval power. There is no doubt about that. But, why really so much investment in the Navy? Well, let's take a look at that right now. China is making the investments now to lay the groundwork for a Navy with true global reach. If they had access to multiple ports in the Atlantic and the Pacific, in the event of conflict, China would have options to support their troops, and to transport supplies, which may enable them to gain a valuable tactical edge. Xi, has already achieved China having the largest international military naval fleet, but now the only question is, when will China show its full naval capability to the world? Is it really true that China really won't catch up with the United States as the world's leading power? You can give your answers and thoughts in the comments below. As always, subscribe to our channel GeoEco for just more stuff like this. Thanks for watching.